again, welcome aboard the RMS Queen Mary. In case you missed it upstairs, my name is Daniel. We're going to start our tour off with a quick general history. The Queen Mary was owned and operated by the Cunard Line. The ship set sail on her maiden voyage May 27, 1936, out of Southampton, England, bound for New York. Considered the fastest, most elegant way to cross the Atlantic, the Queen Mary would count kings, queens, other royalty, and celebrities of every kind among her many passengers. With the outbreak of the Second World War, the ship was drafted into service as a troop ship. Every nook and cranny was outfitted with bunks. Thousands of soldiers were crammed on board. So many at times they had to sleep in shifts. During the war, the ship would sail over 600,000 miles, transport over 800,000 soldiers. Her role was so vital that Hitler offered a $250,000 bounty to the captain who could find and sink her. Now, after the war, the ship enjoyed another 20 years of transatlantic passenger service, but by 1967, transatlantic air travel had taken over her route. The ship was no longer turning a profit for Cunard. She was actually hemorrhaging money. Fuel cost had risen. It was now costing $75,000 a day in just fuel to keep the ship running. This ship was not fuel efficient. She got 13 feet to the gallon. You want to know what it would cost today? About $310,000 per day to keep this ship running. Yeah. So Kennard decided to retire the Queen Mary, put her up for auction. The highest bid came from the city of Long Beach with a mere $3,450,000. She arrived here December 9th of 1967. They started transforming the ship into the hotel and attraction that she is today, opening to the public in May of 1971. In April of 1993, the Queen Mary was added to the National Register of Historic Places. This last May marked the 81st anniversary of her maiden voyage. This December will mark the 50th anniversary of the ship's arrival here in Long Beach. Now, over the years, there have been stories Reports, rumors, whispers in the dark, that the Queen Mary is haunted. The ship is currently listed by Time Magazine as one of the ten most haunted places in the world. She's number six on that list. But not everyone can be the Amityville Horror House. <laughs> so, we do get a lot of guests on board the Queen Mary interested in the hauntings paranormal activity reported on board. We get asked a number of questions about these hauntings. Questions like, why is the Queen Mary haunted? It's a very good question, one that's relatively easy to answer. The reason the Queen Mary is haunted is, I don't know. <laughs> Nobody fully understands the cause of a haunting. That's why hauntings are referred to as being paranormal. The word paranormal is defined as something that cannot be scientifically explained, and therefore we really can't explain it. But there are a number of theories that have been presented over the years, one of those theories being the number of deaths that have occurred on board the ship. We know of 58 deaths that occurred on board this ship. These have been from illness, old age, accidents, war wounds, suicides, and even a rumored drowning. Many people believe that the deaths have contributed to some of the hauntings that now take place on board the ship. Another theory that's been presented by psychic investigators is that on board the ship we have what is known as a vortex, a whirlpool of electromagnetic energy that acts as a gateway for ghosts and spirits to come on board the ship. One of our first psychic investigators, Peter James, claimed that because of this vortex we have anywhere from three to 600 ghosts on board the ship. So there's another theory. That's a possibility that some of these people have experienced nothing more than what is known as a residual energy, an energy of a past event stored within the ship that repeats over and over and over again. That's another theory that some of the things that are commonly believed to be hauntings on board the ship is nothing more than a stored energy repeating itself. But most of the paranormal investigators who have investigated the ship find that the strongest hauntings tend to stem from sudden horrible violent deaths that occurred on board the ship. There were a number of those, and we'll be talking about some of them during our tour today. Now, whether these are the answers or not, we don't know. These are just theories that have been presented. Another question I get asked frequently, especially when I'm doing the ghost tours, is if I've ever seen a ghost on board the ship. Well, I can tell you I've seen things, heard things, and felt things on board this ship I have absolutely no explanation for. And no, I'm not saying that just because they pay me to. 
Uh, I'll share with you a couple of my own experiences during our tour today. I have also had a lot of guests ask if I'm a ghost, I am not. <laughs> so usually at this point that somebody says that's exactly what a ghost would say, so allow me to demonstrate for you that I cannot pass through solid matter. So hopefully that takes care of that. I also want to point out that I do not consider myself in any way to be a psychic, a sensitive, or a medium. I am an extra large. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here all week. The first ghost story that we're going to talk about on our tour was reported here in the Mauritania room. This room was originally the third class garden lounge. It was the social center for third class passengers on board the Queen Mary. Today the room is used as one of our banquet event rooms. Following one of these banquet events back in 1989, three women from our property services department were dispatched to clean the room up. Entered the room and discovered a woman wearing a long white gown sitting in a chair placed in the middle of the dance floor. The dance floor was located on this side of the room. Now, the lady in the white gown just sat there, hands folded in her lap, looking down. And when the ladies from property services entered the room, she did not look up at them, did not say anything to them, did not acknowledge their presence at all. But they came into the room anyway, they got set up, started cleaning. After a few minutes, one of them realized that they would need to sweep and mop the dance floor, and that meant the lady in white would have to go. So one of them stepped up to the lady in white, told her that they needed to clean the dance floor and that she'd have to move. But she just sat there. There were a few more failed attempts asking her to move off the dance floor. And the lady from property services stepped outside of the room, got on her walkie-talkie, called for assistance from security, and returned to the room to discover that the chair was empty. The lady in the white dress was gone. Her two co-workers were standing off to the side of the dance floor, staring at the empty chair. So she approached them, asked them what had happened to the lady in white, where did she go? They told her that just after she had stepped out of the room, the lady in white suddenly looked up, looked around the room, perhaps looking for something, someone, then slowly disappeared. Now, all three of them reported seeing her, said that she was here for approximately 10 minutes. It's the longest reported ghost sighting that's ever been recorded on board the ship. The identity of the lady in white is a mystery to us. We do not know who she was, but there have also been sightings of her throughout our hotel corridors. Sightings of her in the first class main lounge, sightings of her in the lounge at Sir Winston's, one of our restaurants. There have also been sightings of her in some of our hotel rooms. So for those of you staying on board the ship, have fun with that. <laughs> Definitely one of our most frequently reported ghosts, the most recent reported sighting of her being about four weeks ago, reported to us by one of our hotel guests. We saw her down on B deck approach one of the doors to one of the hotel rooms and simply walked right through the door. That was about four weeks ago. So, before we continue with our tour, does anyone have any questions so far? Do they have any theories on who she might be? Nope. Any other questions? Okay, moving on. <laughs> this way. As mentioned, uh, we recently passed the 81st anniversary of the ship's maiden voyage. And at this point, virtually every nook and cranny on board the Queen Mary has some sort of ghost story connected to it. There really is no safe place on board. Not even the bathrooms. <laughs> For example, the ladies' room right here, where ladies have reported seeing what it seems to be the ghost of a captain or a ship's officer inside the ladies' room. Hmm. Some of you may be wondering why we have a male apparition showing up inside the ladies' room. Well, it turns out that the ladies' room was originally the men's room, and the men's room over here was originally the ladies' room. <laughs> they were switched here in Long Beach. Why they did that, I have no clue. But many parapsychologists have told us that this could explain these reported sightings of the ghost of a captain or officer inside this ladies' room. Now, some people do believe it could be the ghost of off second officer William Stark. Second officer William Stark did pass away on board the ship after accidentally ingesting tetrachloride dry cleaning fluid. So how do you accidentally wind up drinking dry cleaning fluid? Well, every night before turning in for the night, Officer Stark had his personal steward fetch him a glass of gin from Officer Stark's own private stock. But he also had a cabinet right next to his gin cabinet where he stored cleaning chemicals 
and some of those cleaning chemicals were stored in old gin bottles. Well, one evening, his steward made a mistake, went to the wrong cabinet, grabbed a gin bottle of clear liquid, which turned out to be tetrachloride, poured a glass of this for Officer Stark, delivered it to the officer, and uh, Officer Stark downed it in one gulp. Realized his mistake, of course, but instead of going to the ship's doctor, he simply went to bed. <laughs> yep. Within three days, he was dead. So, some people think that could be Second Officer Stark. I don't know. I've never been in there to investigate myself. Um, but uh, in any case, ladies, good luck with that restroom. <laughs> it was August of 2012. One of our many tour guides reported that when he entered this area of the ship, from the hotel corridor right over here, approaching the third class main staircase, he noticed what appeared to be a gentleman dressed all in black walking up the last few steps of the stairs. Nothing out of the ordinary, until the gentleman walking up the stairs reached the top of the stairs and suddenly was gone. The tour guide mentioned this to one of his supervisors later that day, and the supervisor informed him that he had seen a ghost commonly referred to as the man in black. Yes, we are very original when we name our ghosts around here. Lady in white, man in black. Anywho. Uh, but also went on to explain that the third class main staircase was where two of the Queen Mary's passengers had lost their lives. It's the steepest passenger stairway on board the ship and is also located toward the bow, the very front of the ship. It's where the roughest ride was on board the Queen Mary. During rough weather, this was the part of the ship that'd be rising and falling with the waves. The ship would encounter some rather large waves, some of them measuring over 90 feet in height. You'd have to sail up and over them. Going up and over the wave, the stairs would get steeper, to the point where they were almost vertical. And if you happened to be walking up or down the stairs at the wrong time, you were going to fall. And this happened to a number of passengers. Two of them did not survive their injuries. And it is generally believed that uh, the man in black was one of those passengers. There have been over two dozen recorded sightings of him on this section of the third class main staircase here in Long Beach. The tour guide who reported seeing him back in 2012 still works on board the ship, still does tours, and tells his tour groups about his experience in the third person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, now that we know how dangerous the stairs are, let's walk down. Cool. <laughs> that is what that room was. Occasionally, we do get guests inquiring what are the hours of the third class nursery, which our staff has to tell them that the room is no longer used as a nursery. Some of those guests will inform us then that they were passing by this room earlier in the day and heard children on the other side of that door. We've had guests tell us that they have heard children laughing and crying just on the other side of that door. That room has not been used as a nursery ever since the Queen Mary's arrival here in Long Beach in 1967. Instead, the room is currently used as a stock room for one of our shops, located up in the main hall. Our next stop will be taking us into the forward cargo areas on board the ship. To access that area, we'll be going through this door right over here. This door also has a sign on it, but this sign says, Crew Members Only. Thank you. We're going to ignore it. So we are now at the bow, the forward end, the front, commonly referred to as the pointy part of the ship. The room we're currently in, this is where they would store the mooring lines, the ropes they would use to tie the ship up whenever she was in port. This room was also part of the very first paranormal investigation to take place on board this ship. And that happened in 1988, and portions of that investigation were seen on television, part of the TV show Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, they would interview uh, people who worked on board the Queen Mary, ask them about their experiences, and then go to the areas where they had these experiences, recreated some of them, and investigated them. Now, one of the former crew members they interviewed for that special was uh, a marine engineer who worked on board the ship here in Long Beach. He said after he was first hired on board the ship, he would do his regularly scheduled shift, then stick around a few hours after work just to explore the Queen Mary, to familiarize himself with the ship so that he would know every nook and cranny on board. He said he'd come up into this area from time to time and he'd hear sounds as though something had hit the exterior of the ship. That was one of them, a loud crash. 
He said that he would hear rivets popping, water rushing into the ship, metal tearing, men screaming out for help. And he would climb up and down the ladder through this hatchway here, trying to find the source for these sounds. He never could. Now he's showing the lead investigator this area. They heard a few sounds. The lead investigator decided to leave a voice-activated tape recorder in the lower decks overnight. Came back the next day to see if it had recorded anything, and sure enough it did. Two minutes of what sounds like rivets popping and water rushing into the ship. Now the sounds that have been heard in this area many people believe are residual connected to an accident that the Queen Mary was involved in. This accident occurred on October 2nd of 1942, while the Queen Mary was serving as a troop ship. She was off the coast of Northern Ireland, utilizing a zigzag cruising pattern, changing course every three to seven minutes. It was done to make the ship as difficult to target as possible. One of her escort cruisers, the HMS Curaçao, was approaching just forward off of the starboard bow. The Curaçao was originally positioned five miles ahead of the Queen Mary, but this ship was so fast that the Curaçao could not maintain that distance. And the captain of the Curaçao knew that the Queen Mary was following this zigzag cruising pattern, knew that the ship would be turning, but he did not know which way. He took a guess, and he was wrong. The Curaçao cut across the Queen Mary's bow, and at approximately 2.12 that afternoon there was a collision. The bow of the Queen Mary struck the midsection of the HMS Curaçao and cut the smaller vessel in half. Within one minute both halves of the Curaçao were engulfed in flames and within five minutes sank beneath the Atlantic Ocean. Of the 439 crew members on board the Curaçao, only 101 survived. 338 did not. Now in that collision, the Queen Mary also suffered structural damage. Her bow caved in 11 feet. The damage starting on this deck and extending four decks below us. It extended below the Queen Mary's water line. Her hull was breached and she did start taking on water. But the ship was also outfitted with 39 hydraulically controlled watertight door hatches. Once activated, they'd be closed within 60 seconds, creating watertight compartments. So the only compartment was the forward compartment. The decks below us were flooded, but nothing aft of the forward compartment. Now the Queen Mary was able to make it into Scotland. Once there, they unloaded the ship, pumped the water out of the lower decks, went down there to assess the damage, and they discovered some of the bodies of the crew from the Curaçao within our cargo holds. Yeah. So the sounds that have been heard in this area are believed to be residual and connected to that accident. On occasion, we have had guests take a look down into the lower areas directly below us. I've had people tell me that they have seen men down there described as sailors or soldiers. I do want to point out that area is off limits to all Queen Mary employees. So it could be that uh, those sightings could be connected to the bodies found in that area following that collision. There's something else that has been happening in here. It's happened three times. The first time this happened, it was a little over a year ago now, a young man, probably uh, 15, 16 years old, he was standing at the back of the group while I was talking about the Curaçao. He was standing right here in the doorway. Nobody standing behind him. He felt something scratch him across the back of his neck. It was something that had never been reported in this part of the ship. Whenever we had guests tell us that they had felt something scratch them, it was usually down in boiler room number three. Incidentally, it was at that time that they started a restoration project down there. Yeah. Now, initially I thought that something had moved from the boiler rooms to this area of the ship. And I told people about this experience uh, that this young man had, feeling something scratch him. Uh, he even stepped underneath the light. We took a look at the back of his neck. There were visible scratch marks on the back of his neck. Um, 
I talked about this on my tours for about six months. We had no repeat events of that, so I stopped talking about it. And then four weeks ago, it happened again. <laughs> this time, it was another young man. This young man was around 13, 14 years old. While we were in this area of the ship, he asked me if people had ever experienced stomach pains down here. I explained to him that there were certain areas on board the Queen Mary where people have been known to experience nausea. And that usually will subside once we exit the area. Well, we were at that point. We were about to leave this area, so we did. We exited the same way that we came in. When he went out the door, he asked me if anyone had ever been scratched in this part of the ship. And I told him it's happened once, to the best of my knowledge, and asked him why he was asking. And that's when he lifted up his shirt, exposed his belly, and showed me that there were three red scratch marks across his belly. Interesting that he was complaining about stomach pains while we were down here. And then just a few days after that occurred, I had a couple of guests tell me that they watched scratches appear on a woman's back while we were down in this area. So it appears that we have something that scratches people down here from time to time. So we'll be making our way out of this area now. Uh, the Queen Mary is a hotel. We have 346 hotel rooms on board. Many of them do have reports of paranormal activity connected to them. Uh, one of our suites, M119, is known for the smell of cigar smoke. Guests have reported smelling that inside the room. There have also been occasions people have smelled that cigar smoke in the corridor just outside the door to the room at times when the room has been vacant. Now, a number of years ago, one of our maids went in there and reported encountering a gentleman sitting in a chair smoking a cigar. She apologized for the intrusion, told him that she would come back to clean the room after he had checked out, but also reminded him the Queen Mary is, in fact, a non-smoking hotel. Told him he'd have to put the cigar out. He just glared at her for a moment, she said. Then he began to stand up out of the chair. And as he did so, he simply faded away into a little wisp of smoke. The smoke floated up into the air, she said, and then into the portrait hanging on the wall. She looked at the portrait and realized that it was a painting of the gentleman she had seen inside the room. And that painting is of Winston Churchill. The room M119 today is known as the Churchill Suite in his honor. He always requested that room whenever he sailed on board the ship. Winston Churchill sailed on board the Queen Mary a total of eight times. Uh, another room that... Uh, this one's got a little bit more publicity around it. Uh, B340. Uh, B340 is actually believed to be the most haunted hotel room on board this ship. Has not actually been used as part of the hotel since 1983 due to some of the problems we had with it. And these problems <laughs> consisted of guests complaining that the lights would go on and off by themselves in the room. Uh, the TV would change channel, just volume, go on and off all on its own. The water in the sink in the faucet said to be turned on all by itself. Now, initially, we did what any normal hotel would do. We had our electricians take a look at the electrical, the lighting. Uh, we had our plumbers check out the plumbing for the faucet. We replaced the TV, but we still got these reports on a fairly regular basis. We also had a number of guests tell us that in the middle of the night, they would hear someone knocking on the door. Even as they were opening the door, they could hear someone knocking on the other side. It would stop when they had opened the door all the way and reveal an empty corridor. We had guests complain that in the middle of the night, they would feel somebody sit down on the edge of the bed next to them. There was nobody there. We had guests tell us that they would feel something tugging on the blankets, pulling them down towards the foot of the bed. We had guests tell us they'd wake up in the middle of the night to a chill, find the blankets on the other side of the room. We also had one hotel guest turn up at the front desk in the middle of the night, told our staff that she was staying alone in room B340, and she woke up when she thought she felt somebody climb into bed next to her, but there was nobody there. Now initially she thought that she had been dreaming, so she tried to go back to sleep, and that's when she heard a man's voice whisper, I'm cold. Not only did she show up at the hotel front desk in the middle of the night to tell them about this experience, she brought all of her luggage with her and checked out. Yeah. It was at that point we started looking through the ship's logs, curious to know if there had ever been any report of odd activity in the room when the ship was at sea. We found two entry, entries of interest, uh, one from 1958, 
A woman sailing alone in the room had seen a gentleman at the foot of her bed in the middle of the night. She screamed. The steward came to the room, searched it, but he could not find anyone in the room other than this woman. Um, in the report, the steward also stated that when he heard her scream, he was only about 10 paces away from the entrance to the room. He didn't see anyone exit the room. Didn't see anyone in any part of the corridor at all. The other entry of interest that we discovered for this particular room was quite simple. 1948, a passenger by the name of Walter J. Adamson had been found dead in the room. When the autopsy was performed, they could not discover the cause of his death. Yeah. So, some people think that that could explain some of the activity that has been reported within B340. In 1983, we stopped using it after one of our hotel mates had an experience in there. She had just finished making the bed, stepped out into the corridor to get towels from her cart, came back into the room, found the bed completely unmade. Everything had been stripped off of the bed, piled in the middle of the floor. And this startled her so much that she quit. <laughs> That's when management decided to stop using the room as part of the hotel. It sat vacant for about five years. In 1988, it became the payroll office on board the ship. But we had problems with the computers, the printers in that room. Our crew members reported strange activity. Some of them had felt something touch them in there. They also had problems with their paperwork flying off their desks randomly. Initially, they'd think it was the portholes being left open, but the portholes were closed at those times. We also had a number of payroll discrepancies. A lot of shortages were reported on paychecks. Um, after three months of nothing but problems with the room, they decided to relocate payroll to a different part of the ship. And ever since 1988, the room had only been featured as part of our ghost tours until two weeks ago. When management informed tour guides on board the ship that the Haunted Encounters tour, the Paranormal Shipwalk tour, none of our haunted tours would be going to that room anymore. We asked them why. They said, that's not for you to know. So about two weeks ago, they locked us out of the room, giving us absolutely no reason. We are now standing out in front of what is probably the most asked about room on board the ship, the Queen Mary's first class swimming pool. The room is believed by many to be the center of much of the paranormal activity reported on board the ship. It's where psychic investigators have told us that vortex is located. I mentioned that briefly at the start of the tour. The whirlpool of electromagnetic energy that acts as a gateway for ghosts and spirits aboard the ship. They tell us that it is located in the changing rooms connected to the first class swimming pool. The changing rooms are directly below us. There have been sightings of a woman in a 1930s era bathing suit seen at the edge of the swimming pool, dive into it, and disappear. Wet footprints have been known to materialize alongside the swimming pool. I was leading one of our paranormal shipwalk tours through the room back in April of 2010. We discovered a set of wet footprints leading from the swimming pool back into the changing rooms and into one of the changing stalls. Now some of you are probably thinking, wet footprints next to a swimming pool, big deal. Except our swimming pool's been drained for 25 years. There's no water in it. And even though it looks like there's light reflecting off of water in the swimming pool, there isn't. We have ripple projectors in there. Special effects. Ta-da! It's also where one of our most famous ghosts tends to make her presence known. The ghost of a little girl we call Jackie. Whether that's her name or not, we don't know. That was the name given to us by one of our psychic investigators, Peter James, who had claimed to have communicated with Jackie. Jackie told him that she had drowned in the second-class swimming pool. The trouble with this story is that we have absolutely no record of this ever occurring. However, there's a possibility that it did. There was one period of time the Queen Mary was transporting children. Through interviews, we have discovered that there was water in the second class swimming pool during some of these crossings. We don't have records for these crossings. Was it was commonly referred to as the Bride and Baby Shuttle. It took place between February and September of 1946. The Queen Mary was transporting war brides and service dependents from Europe to the United States 
the conclusion of World War II. So there were quite a few children on board the ship. During the warmer summer months, we found through interviews that they would fill the second class swimming pool, as the first class swimming pool was primarily used for laundry. So with water in the second class swimming pool for people to swim in, there's a possibility that a little girl could have drowned in it. The reason we don't have records for these crossings is that we don't have any of the records for the ship from 1940 until 1947. The ship was under the command of the Royal Navy. Those records have never been released, so we don't know. Now Jackie has been seen inside this room a number of times, usually peeking up and over the railing of the balcony, sometimes peeking out from behind the pillars, skipping and dancing alongside the swimming pool. There have also been occasions we've heard her laugh, sing, as well as cry inside the room. Now, some people are curious as to why she now shows up here in the first class swimming pool instead of the second class swimming pool. The answer to that is that the second class swimming pool no longer exists, having been removed here in Long Beach to make way for exhibit space when the ship first came here to Long Beach. For those of you wondering where the second class swimming pool was located, it was located where our 4D theater is today. Because this is the only swimming pool still intact aboard the Queen Mary, we believe the Jackie has given herself a free upgrade to first class. There's also one other story I do want to share with you. Unfortunately, there is not enough time left in the tour for us to make our way back there. The good news, however, is you can still get to this area. It's part of your self-guided tour. That is the Queen Mary's engine room. In the lowest deck of the engine room, all the way aft, find yourself near an escalator no longer in operation. And near that escalator, you will find one of our watertight door hatches. Door hatch number 13. It was at that door hatch that on July 10th, 1966, one of our crew members was crushed to death. Now, nobody knows exactly how this happened. The door hatches, they were hydraulically controlled. Once activated, 700 pounds of hydraulic pressure per square inch. Slide the doors closed in about 45 to 60 seconds. The door hatches were activated at 3.50 in the morning, just as a precaution. The ship was entering a dense fog. Whenever visibility on board the ship was low, they would just seal them in case. It was about 10 minutes after they had been activated that they discovered the body of this 18-year-old fireman in the door hatch. Found in a standing position with his arms pinned at his side, the door, which would slide closed, was pressing up against the right side of his body. When they found him, he was unconscious but still alive. They released the hydraulics, called for the doctor. The doctor looked him over, injected him with morphine to ease any pain that he was in. The young man did pass away shortly thereafter. As I said, no one knows what led up to this accident. There has been some speculation. Perhaps he was playing a game of chicken, jumping back and forth through the door hatch just to see how many times he could make it through. Some people believe that he had stopped to pick up a wrench that he had dropped. It was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Some people have also questioned there's a possibility that he may have been held there against his will. We don't know. We probably never will fully understand the truth behind this accident. There have been a number of sightings down there in the engine room. Guests and crew members have reported seeing what appears to be the ghost of an engineer dressed in dark blue coveralls that are stained in oil. He has a beard and wears a white cap. That does fit his description. They say that they've seen him running along the original catwalks, or from a distance they see him near watertight door hatch 13 try to catch up to him, but he's not there. Disembodied voices as well as disembodied whistling have been heard back there. There have been a number of guests who have reported feeling something touch them as they pass through the door hatch, only to discover greasy handprints where they felt something touch them. So if you do happen to find yourself down in the engine room today by door hatch 13, feel up to it, say hello to John. But don't be surprised if he lets you know that he heard you. To access the engine room, you'll want to go out these doors over here. At the end of the gangway on the left-hand side, you'll see a staircase. You just want to go up those stairs, 
Follow that raised walkway alongside the ship to the other end, and then down the stairs back there. That'll get you access to the engine room, historic exhibit, the 4D theater, and propeller display. To access the upper decks on board the ship, you are welcome to use the onboard elevators right over here. They will take you up as far as sun deck. Promenade deck is where we began our tour if you wanted to head back up there. If you have any questions or need directions anywhere else on board the ship this evening, feel free to stick around. I'll be here for a few minutes. And if you enjoyed the tour, my name is Daniel. If you did not, it's Tiffany. But thank you very much for coming aboard the Queen Mary, and have a great evening. Thank you. And this is the infamous door 13 that we learned about where the poor man lost his life. And I'm afraid of something happening, so I'm going to get out of here.